So what is Mars Balloon? The idea is it's a way of engaging uh, secondary school students um, to think about potential careers in the future space industry and widely working in science, maybe space science, engineering as well. We launch balloons with um, Kinder Egg capsules that the students have put experiments on. So the students have to think of anything that humans or robots might be doing on Mars in the future. On this flight, we've had 36 schools contribute 55 experiments um, that the students have thought up. They've put it into the Kinder Egg, they've thought about how they're going to test it, and they've made hypotheses about what's going to happen to it in Mars-like conditions. There's a GPS module, so a lot bigger than the one you have in your phone, which will um, hopefully tell us where we are. And we've got a mobile phone, a little smartphone, which we use as a backup. So if this box fails, we can track the SIM card on the phone, we can text the phone and it will turn on its GPS and, and text us back with its location. But also with this box, new things we've added for this flight is we've got um, a data logger for students. So the student experiments can, they can have some kind of electronics inside that's sending out a signal and then we plug it into this box and we'll save the data for them throughout the whole flight. Well, doing STEM outreach is really important because in the future we need a lot of scientists, engineers, mathematicians, it's really good for the economy um, and encouraging kids at an early age to see it as a potential career path and also exciting and interesting is really important and it's, it's very good to see them excited and, uh, and engaged by what we do. I had some really good teachers at school, some good um, female role models. I actually did my work experience um, at the Space Centre in Leicester and the director was a, um, a lady and there was a lot of lady scientists and engineers working there as well and they really um, inspired me and showed me that I could do um, the job that I wanted to do. So we can't see the balloon anymore but I can still see it via my antenna here, my Yagi antenna. So we're listening to the tracking device that's on the balloon and we're, this is now one part of a large network of radio amateurs who are going to be following this flight today um, for us. Let's go find it. The way we know where it's going to land is we have a, a prediction tool on the internet which we run. Uh, we, we keep track of it uh, about a week beforehand, trying to pick the perfect day because it'll tell us uh, with the upper atmosphere winds where it's going to go and some days it's going off into the ocean and we don't want to go that way. Some days it's going maybe a little bit too close and we think that's a bit risky. Uh, we picked today because the, the, the tracker said it was going to land basically somewhere near uh, Basingstoke and looking at the prediction it gave us uh, yesterday, um, it's actually within about a mile and a half of where it predicted. We're here and it's there. <laughs> so we're heading directly in that direction. We're all going to line it up along, walk straight towards it yep. and hopefully someone will spot it because it's red and pink. Yep. <laughs> okay. Are we going into the woods? I love a good mission. Yeah. <laughs> and fine. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's actually a good find after you start doubting. Yeah. <laughs>